Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Thanks so much for joining me here on this beautiful fall day. Today I am in Gary's new kitchen. My parents got their whole kitchen remodeled, which was long overdue, and I'm so glad that they were able to get it done. So I'm gonna show you his new kitchen, and we are gonna share with you our best veggie burger recipes, so stay tuned. Okay, we are in Gary's new kitchen. This is Gary, as you all know. And today we're gonna to do our veggie burgers, so we're gonna be starting with my recipe. But first, before we start, I, uh, the last uh, video we made for you folks was uh, when Syracuse University played Clemson University. So I just want to give a shout out to all those Clemson University fans. Uh, they whipped Syracuse pretty good and they have a fabulous team. And here's to Clemson. And what are you drinking? Uh, it's not Clemson orange, it's Syracuse orange and blue beer. Same I had, but I wish I had a Clemson orange beer with a big tiger paw and that would be nice. But this is good too. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you are the ingredients that I put into mine. I did prep some ahead of time, but they're things that don't take very long to prepare. So the first thing I have is one cup of cooked brown rice and all I did was use frozen rice from Trader Joe's or wherever. And so it's really easy to heat up. I took one cup of dry rolled oats and I whizzed them up in my Vitamix to make a kind of like a coarse flour. This is one can of pinto beans that I drained and rinsed. I have two cups of veggies. So all I did was take a bag of frozen mixed vegetables and I think this had corn, carrots, green beans, uh, and I think lima beans. It was like a basic soup mix. Um, defrosted what I needed and I also threw in some frozen spinach with that. So I just cooked everything in the microwave and drained it really, really good and pressed out all the excess water. Then we're also gonna be adding some ketchup and I add either soy sauce or Bragg's liquid aminos. If you're doing salt free, you can just leave that out. And of course some spices. So I just use basic onion and garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and some freshly ground black pepper. All right, the first thing I do is grind up my vegetables. Now I don't turn them into a complete mush, but I grind them up pretty finely and I leave a few whole bits in there for some visual interest. All right, I'm gonna take my beans and I'm going to mash them up. Now I like to leave a few whole beans in there just for some visual interest, but you can mash them up until they're pretty smushed. Then I'm gonna mix together my beans and my vegetable mixture, and I'm going to add some ketchup and Bragg's liquid aminos. And hopefully you don't have to chisel your onion powder out like I did. A screwdriver, I use a screwdriver once in a while. And I'm just gonna add the rest of my spices. I'm gonna mix in my rice. And then I start adding in my oats a little bit at a time and then I stir after I add a little bit until they're all incorporated. I'm using some mushroom powder from Trader Joe's. That's an optional ingredient. You could just as easily use some sauteed mushrooms. It'll give it a nice savory note. And then mix everything together until your batter is nice and sticky like this. All right, and then I taste to make sure my seasonings are on point. And then I just start forming them into patties and I'm gonna put them on a plate cause I'm gonna refrigerate these for a little bit. Now we've, uh, you've seen Jeanette's version of the uh, burgers and I can tell you uh, factually that they are delicious when they're done and all those ingredients are, they may look green, but they taste great. Here's my version. I don't have as much uh, stuff in mine as Jeanette has, but it came out okay, so here we go. The first thing I do 
is I cook up a, a little mixture in a saucepan of some white queen, quinoa, but it, it says quinoa, but it's spelled quinoa for some reason. I don't get that, but, uh, and some bulgur wheat. Now, bulgur wheat is a, is a grain that, uh, it's pretty hardy and it's a, it's a good agent to uh, keep your uh, burgers together. So what I do is I mix a, a half a cup of white quinoa and bulgur wheat and in in so you have one cup of grain. And now you have to have a liquid and you need two cups of liquid. So what I do is I take a can of sliced beets and in your, pour the whole thing liquid it all in your blender. You might have to add just a touch of uh, water to it to get the full two cups. And uh, put your liquid in and heat, heat your liquid to a, a boil and then bring it down to uh, a simmer and then pour in your grains and mix them up and then keep it covered for about uh, 10 minutes or so until the grains uh, like rice will absorb all the liquid. And after the uh, quinoa has sprouted a little bit, you'll be able to tell it looks like it's got little ears on it. Here's what it comes out to look like. Now, for any of your meat, red meat eating friends, they shouldn't have a problem eating this burger. What we're gonna do is dump our quinoa and uh, mixture in, in a bowl. Now, I put this in, I made this earlier and put it in the refrigerator because it does mix and, and set better when it's in the fridge. So I won't show you the actual cooking of this stuff, but just about 10 minutes, uh, maybe 12 minutes, and your uh, quinoa, uh, bulgur we will have absorbed all the beet, mixed beet liquid. Okay, a little note about quinoa, or quinoa as some people like to call it. You know, look at the package instructions when you're cooking it, but that's one of the grains. You have to rinse it off really good to get this uh, substance off of it. I think it's like a saponin. It's really bitter. You have to rinse quinoa first. So just make sure you follow the package directions when you cook quinoa or quinoa. The, the quinoa mixture is going to be kind of like your binding uh, flavoring agent. Uh, but um, my base is actually... Uh, Simply a can of uh, lentils. Uh, you can you can use raw lentils and wash them out and cook them, but uh, it's a lot easier to use uh, store bought. And I rinse these off as well. And I use two cans. And uh, what I did is I, I cut up a, a, a half an onion and about a half of a red bell pepper, definitely some garlic, and I threw it in a, a little blender and just. I blended it all up. Now you can you can chop this all up finely and mash it up yourself with a potato masher if you don't have a blender or don't want to use this, but you want it to get to a consistency just about like this. What is your version of a little garlic? Um, uh, maybe half a shovel. We're going to combine, uh, incorporate these ingredients. And what I did uh, also is I I cooked up separately in a pan with some, I sauteed uh, uh, some portobello mushroom caps in, in water for a couple minutes until they uh, released their, uh, their juices. And I threw some of the juice in this mixture as well. And I'm gonna put the, did I just chop these up into little pieces? Now this will give your mixture a meaty consistency. I'm also gonna throw in a little, uh, mushroom powder for a little added meatiness, a little Italian seasoning for flavor, some fresh ground pepper, and uh, if I put more garlic in, somebody's going to punch me. I, I like quinoa uh, as a side dish, and I like it better than rice because it's a uh, more flavorful, I think, and has a better texture to it. I like quinoa too, but uh, it's not as good as quinoa. Now, the only problem is this probably won't stay together. We need uh, some type of another binding agent. And I use panko breadcrumbs. We're going to 
sprinkle these in here now. How, how much do you add? Well, enough to make it, give it the consistency to, to hold your burgers together. It, it might be a trial and error thing just to, to see. Uh, you don't want it too bready, but you want it bready enough so it will stick together for you. And you see what I mean about it mixes a lot better when it's cold. Now, you can mix all these ingredients together and then put it in the fridge before you make your hamburger patties. Works just as well. But for, because we're going to be on TV, I mix, I, made, I refrigerated them earlier. See, they hold together pretty well with the, with the panko. And I like them about you know, three eighths of an inch to a half an inch thick. Uh, and they grill up nice, they don't, they can fall apart once in a while on you, but that's why you make your patties and put them in the fridge for a while. I just got stuff all over my wife's brand new counter, so it's a good thing she didn't see it. That's the spicy meat, the ball. I asked my wife if I could get a, a, a hamburger, a patty form for $20 at a local restaurant supply store cheap. So that's why I'm making them like this, because obviously I couldn't get it. Can I ask and, uh, is, what is this in here? Just make yeah. sure you remove all the labels from your from your products before you... It, it depends on what the label was from. This probably makes about the same amount as Jeanette made, uh, six, six to seven, maybe eight, if I uh, skimp on the last couple. And one of the things that I uh, think is important to uh, anybody who is trying a vegan diet and isn't really into it 100% uh, uh, doesn't buy into it and you always want to, you got to have your meat well after you have things like this and Jeanette's burger and, and other other makes of burgers these are our vegan these are our burgers we don't need the other stuff these are ours and the more comfort food looks like the real thing, I think the more you're going to want to try it and stay with it. It's just, uh, it's ingrained into our psyche, I guess, that hamburgers have to be pink inside and red. I mean, so if that's the way it is, if, it, if this helps you eat burgers, you know, eat the ingredients, lentils, uh, quinoa, quinoa, uh, and, and, and other veggies, and them, regardless of what you put in there, if you'll eat it because it looks like something you're used to eating, then that's even more benefit. These are the green chilies that we get. Um, we order them right from New Mexico. They're shipped to us frozen. I used to live in New Mexico and as far as I'm concerned, that's where you can get the best green chilies. New Mexico is famous for green chilies. Um, and this is a great place to buy them. So you can just order them right online. For any uh, of you that uh, like portobello mushrooms, uh, what I like to do is uh, buy a couple good sized caps uh, and then clean the stem and the fins out, wash them out really well. Now, these are great for stuffing them with quinoa and any veggie mix that you want to and putting them in the, broil them in the oven uh, or you could cook them in a microwave if you want. I mean, put them on about 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and they come out perfect. They're delicious and you can put a little marinara sauce over them, uh, cheese sauce if you like. But these are wonderful and I'm gonna cut some of these up and cook these for top of our burgers. I put a little bit of water in a, in a saucepan and I'm gonna saute these in some water. So what are you putting in there? Just a little garlic salt. I'm gonna put some smoked paprika in them. Here's the burgers. You can grill these, both of these, on your grill outside. Smoke them if you want. Smoke them if you got them. These are uh, really delicious because they're both very dense and they stay together. This delicious burger of 300 calories, all veggies, protein. Fiber. Fiber, everything you want. And uh, 
No crap. It's real good. These are no crap burgers. Good job, Dad. Was perfect with some Clemson ale. <laughs> All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining us. If you give these a try, let us know how they turned out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. Have a Bye. good night. Bye. Okay, a little note about quinoa or quinoa. As oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Run for your life. Yeah.